Yeah. And of course, you know, you don't want to give out too much information about the documentary because we all have to watch it. <laughs> right. But are these men, so this is a, like a medical tourism, <laughs> so like prostitution tourism or sexual tourism, and these men are not all Argentinian. No, right. None, none of our characters, well, <laughs> actually, yes, one of our characters is Argentinian. Okay. We have three main characters in the film. Okay. Uh, the first is um, Ramiro. He is actually Argentine. He was born here in, in Buenos Aires. His parents are both Argentine. Uh, they took him out when he was six months old okay. and he lived the rest of his life in Texas. Okay. So he's the most Texan guy you will ever be. <laughs> That's your amazing. Life. I Cowboy really want to watch hat, this. Uh, you know, the whole thing. And so, Square shirt. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, he was deported from the country for selling drugs. From the United, United States. States okay. Because he never got his... Uh, Citizenship. citizenship and so instead of putting him in jail they just sent him back to Argentina so he's stuck <laughs> here he hates the country it's full of communist socialist Indians you know every <laughs> racist idea you can think of even though this is his actual history he hates it but he's here and so to make money he gives uh, architectural tours and historical tours during the day and sexual tours during the night so oh. he goes and he shows them the, ob the obelisk, he shows them the Recoleta Cemetery, and then when the night comes, he take them, takes them to all the different uh, whorehouses. In so his sex store includes, like, not just like, this is where you buy sex, but like, let's stop here and you guys all right, he, get he, the prostitutes. He, uh, he shows it's them where to go, and he lets them know, you know, the tricks to watch out for and all these things. And so he basically, you know, he... He's like, uh, you know, like those bar tours, you know, and uh, the, the bar crawls. It's basically pub the same crawl, thing. yeah. Exactly, okay. it's a pub crawl, but with prostitution. Wow. Yeah, and the, you know, it's fairly interesting because it's it's a job for him. It's really boring for him, you know. And you got to deal with a bunch of drunk, drugged out Americans, and you have to take him from this place to this place to this place. It's just like a pub crawl. Exactly. It's <laughs> just like a pub crawl. Exactly. I was exactly. pub crawl guide once. So ah, okay. Exactly. Know. So you know. I was also uh, process exactly. now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the one character. Um, we have another character who's British, and he actually came here and he uh, got married to a prostitute, and they went to live in Iguazu. Oh. Is she still a prostitute? Uh, she's trying to leave the industry now, okay. but it's very difficult for her. And uh, they've separated, and now he's trying to bring his son back to England with him. Oh, they had a son. They had a son together. Okay. Right? They had a son together. He's trying to leave to go back to England, and so he's trying to find a way to get his son out of the country because he's had enough. Yeah. And the final character is an American. He's the like our real actual monger, and he is an American. Uh, he's coming here for a week, and in this week he wants to have sex with 16 prostitutes before his 31st, 35th birthday so he can get to 400 before his 35th birthday. So he's here wow. for a week and he needs to have sex with 16 prostitutes. I thought I was active. <laughs> yeah. And that's, so you followed him right. during that week. We followed he him. He actually could make time for you guys. Exactly, well, right, exactly, right. So right, you right, guys right, went, all, right. went to all these whorehouses. Right. And did you also go to the whorehouses, Not Natalia? really, not really. Not as a producer, I can, I get to stay home <laughs> and just yeah, yeah, yeah. pay emails and stuff right. like that. <laughs> right. would the boring it, part. Okay. Would, it, would, it, would, would it have been possible for her to of accompany course. you on, on this? Course. Are they welcoming? Because, you know, no, when I, I used to live in the US, right when now. I used to live in the US, I loved going to strip clubs. I have this thing okay. with strippers. Loved going to strip clubs. I'm amazed I'm not a stripper myself. But, <laughs> Ever since I moved here, I started realizing that, you know, the, the sexual culture wasn't maybe as open in that way. Uh, um, you see a lot of prostitutes right, right. at the park, in the street, whatever, but I don't feel, since there's so much um, chivalry and machismo here in Buenos Aires and I get attacked pretty much everywhere I go, I wouldn't dare as a woman to mm -hmm. walk into a whorehouse just for the curiosity like right. I would at a strip club in the US. Right. So that's 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 kind of what I'm trying to, to yeah, say yeah. when, right. when yeah, I ask Yeah, but searches. apart from that, I mean, um, it is better for the documentary that it's only just a very small crew because, I mean, you are in a complicated space with these guys who sometimes are on drugs, sometimes are drunk. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't want to be noticed. So it's better that it's only the director was Jeff, uh, the, cam the cameraman, 
the sound guy and that's it. Like your presence could have complicated yes. the process. But not because I'm a woman or anything yes. like that, just because it's better to keep the crew as small crew. as possible. So they are, they are open, like if I want to go to a horror house, just... Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they would imagine that you were a prostitute. We, we went to these... That's the thing. Right. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> right, exactly. So you would go there, I mean, but there would be no problem. But the, everyone would assume that you're a prostitute. Right, I would just wow. get... Right. Because we would, we went, or at least that you are open to hear some right. offers. Exactly okay. right. Okay. I mean, we went. So part of the film is a night going to the different uh, prostitution houses, and we went with prostitutes, and so you know. I want to ask you about the purpose of the documentary right. because I'm pretty sure that at the beginning, I don't know if you had this. Uh, need to show the reality because you didn't know what the reality was right so it was basically trying to find out what it was about were you afraid that maybe what you were showing was not the right thing how did that happen yeah i mean it's a it's a problem that i deal with every single day is that this is a film that could, could easily get out of my hands we haven't finished the film you know mm -hmm. so this could easily turn into some fascist uh, pro prostitution film uh -huh. uh, but for now what is your focus right so right now like when I started the film the only thing that interested me was the discourse of men uh -huh. and it, as it's turned out it's actually turned out quite well and I and what it is is that the film is composed of moments uh, of super 8 film that we I filmed super 8 uh, tourist shots and then shots of uh, models naked models and then the observational digital film where we follow the guys in their day. Yeah. So over the Super 8 film we have the discourse of these guys that this saying this is the best of all worlds, that basically prostitution is the last free market on the planet where the government and the socialists haven't stuck their hands in and that the whole world should be basically set up on the idea of prostitution and that's so they're, they're very happy with this yeah and then you go back into the digital and you follow the day-to-day -day lives of these people and it is so sad and so wow. lonely is that for me it had it generates this um, this this distance this 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 feeling of uh, contradiction between uh -huh. the two so I'm interested in what happens when people have swallowed a discourse so entirely that it takes over their entire selves and uh, and the results that it has. Excellent. I love it because you're basically replaying with a question and I think that's exactly the, the moment that you're living right now. It's basically a question on what right. documentary will yeah. be. And we have no idea. <laughs> exactly. What is, what, do you want to ask first? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, who will I, so this guy you followed, is he a typical sex tourist? And if not, like, who is the typical guy that right. does this, that comes here, that does those tours? Right. Well, that's the big question, you know, is that uh, what is our idea of the of the client? Mm -hmm. And there's almost no idea of who the client is because, you know, it's that we don't have this image of the client because we see a lot of movies about prostitution. It's always about the very true reality of the of the terrible uh, lives that the women have to go through. But you don't you have this vague idea of who the client is, you know? I guess who would you imagine the client is? Give me well, your what you're what you're talking about now, uh, like these guys, I'm imagining like white American, right. maybe European, probably American, probably upper middle class, maybe middle class. Right. Probably lives a very solitary life and basically spends his year kind of looking forward to these like right. going all out sex capades, whatever you call them, right. you know, a couple weeks abroad, and then the rest of the year is just planning that. And right. That's the big thing in his life. I mean, that's kind of the big thing is that the, the, the big argument for prostitution uh, that you'll hear a lot is that, well, these poor lonely guys, what else can they do? They don't know what else to do. But, you know, so this character, he's 35 years old. He's quite good looking. You know, he looks like an American football star. And uh, he would not have problems picking up women. And I asked him, I said, you know. He said, "Why?" I'm like, "Why can't? You, why don't you just go seducing?" He's like, "Oh, at my age, you know, the girls aren't interested in guys my age." And he's 35 so years young. old. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go kill myself now. <laughs> right. Maybe the guy has a very small penis or something. Well, it's very possible. But he, he <laughs> said, "You know, like I had no problems in the day." You must have a problem doing it. Well, he, <laughs> but the thing is, is that. It's a collection. He's a collectionist, you know? Before yes. this, he collected baseball ga cards, uh, video games, and You're this right. is a new collection for him. And, like, 
you know, people also, the big question is, are these people sex addicts? And that's mm. a big question. I mean, I guess it's possible. But the thing is, is that, uh, I, I mean, I guess that's part of addiction is that you lose all interest. But the guy was not interested in any of this. He just had to do it, man. Is that like, he's competing with another guy who's got 3,000 girls and this guy's 60 years old. And so he's already doing all the calculations of what he's got to do to be able to beat this guy when he's 60 years old. Oh, God. Jesus. And uh, it's crazy, you know? And so we brought him here and we wanted to show him the city. He did not care. He said, I'm staying in my apartment. Get this. I want some girls sent over here. And I'm the obelisk, I don't care, man. I, I have an objective. I got to get to 16 girls to get this before I leave. And uh, <laughs> that's the only thing that interested him. It's but there's also, you know, the so I guess the British guy would be the idea. He's kind of the stereotype of I'm a sad old guy. I don't know how to get women. I don't know what to do. And the idea is to try and explode that myth also. You know, is that that there's all these myths that uh, that they have to do this, that the girls enjoy it also, and that I'm helping them out. And the idea is to try and turn that on its head, or at least just look at it as it is because we've never actually seen men supporting what they do when they do this you know usually they do it and then they don't talk about it so mm -hmm. I, for me it's very interesting that we have guys who are willing to talk about it that's a thing lately like with this whole concept of like the manosphere and the red pill which is which I think is kind of what horrible I don't know what but, that uh, is it's um you know I know you know because I saw you post at the forum. You know Roosh, Roosh V. Ah, yes. Again, the talent yeah, showed like you the, this. The exactly. ringleader of like this, this horrible, disgusting movement of men who right. consider like that feminism oh, yeah. is the worst thing that has exactly. ever happened. Exactly. It's like I contacted so, them. I contacted them for the film, but as a matter of fact, they are against pr prostitution. They are against. They say it's not masculine. It's not <laughs> you know that in the end. But, you know they give pros and cons. There's nothing wrong, with, but in the end, the strong man doesn't have to. Uh, pay. But those guys like. That's interesting, but like it's if you read their their forums, which I do sometimes out yeah. of like this morbid curiosity. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you see these guys who are basically like you described, addicted to sex, and they'll go right. and they'll be like, "I'm going to Thailand and right. I'm going to sleep with 100 women in 100 exactly. days." And it's like at this point, it's not about the sex; right. it's about like product and consuming and proving right. yourself as a man. And it seems to be like deeply, deeply sad and messed up right. to glorify that. But you know, to, this sounds stupid, but like there's something. For me, sexier in addiction than what I see these guys doing. Like, I, f I think I see a difference between sex, addic sex addiction and, and being a collector. Like, you know, it's like addiction is, you know, a psychological thing. We, you know, it's something more honorable about it. I see this as just consumers, you know, is that they aren't, they aren't sufficiently there to be an addict. There's something, I don't know, something more... Uh, Good point. attractive about addiction that these are just consumers instead of consuming televisions or, or, they're just, paid or medicine exactly, yeah. they're just consuming uh, women you know yeah. and what, what's really interesting is this guy who had sex with four, uh, 400 women is that he's, he considers himself a rebel against the American dream because he had a wife at 20 years old and he wanted to build the life and then he separated and now this is his rebellion against the American dream and for me it's very funny because it's just the other side of the American dream. Yeah, it's, you know? the, it's the, the, the football player American dream. Exactly, right. Uh -huh. and exactly, right. The, this, this guy now, basketball player who just was found. Lamar Odom. Lamar Odom, exactly. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah exactly. but they, they have also been convinced that they need to do all these things in order to be someone or exactly, be right. a successful man or something. Right. Like, right. I remember the first right. time I read these forums, right. like the, the idea of these men that formed in my head was like very glamorous men, like very <laughs> rich men in, right. in fancy suits, traveling <laughs> the world, partying with beautiful women. <laughs> and then I realized, I mean, as I got to know, know them that it's nothing like that, <laughs> nothing like that. Right. But they also transmit that image because they are trying to convince others right. and themselves that they have achieved this beautiful image of the great American man. Right. And it's actually exactly the opposite. Right. And th th you bring up a point is that like a, a cocaine addict doesn't brag about how much cocaine he does. You know, an alcoholic doesn't compete with other people. And that's what makes me think it's not a, an, a, an addiction. I mean, it's hard to explain. But but at the same time, Hugh Hefner does say how many women he has fought. Uh, right, exactly. It's cultural. There's this it's idea exactly. that like Europe, Europe uh, 
what can you do as a person if you don't have access to power or money? You have access to sex because sex is like the basis of all this commerce. Right. So I'm a powerful person because I fucked a thousand women. <laughs> like, look at me. Like, I'm going to exactly. be a god. And then the reality is, like, you do that and then you're just like, I've wasted my life and I'm a shell of a human being. <laughs> and money, I guess. Yeah. That, that matters. I don't know. But yeah, it's, uh, it is, I agree completely with what Jeff's saying that it's like consumerism gone completely wild. Like, exactly. the apex of. Like, I don't know, it almost seems like these people are robots at right. this point in yes. human behavior. And what, what's interesting, this guy has a book with every single girl who he has slept with. And in this book, he has their name, where they came from, and he gives them points. Oh my god, that is Jesus. actually romantic in kind of way. Well, you know, <laughs> why, why is it romantic? Because I don't think anybody who has no fucked girl me wants to be in that book. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> think anybody exactly. who has fucked me has my name written down anywhere. <laughs> no, no, no. Trust well, me. Right. <laughs> Well, you have a list. Yeah, I have and what do you have in your list? A number? No, no, no. What do you put in uh, each I put, entry? I put uh, the name, if I remember it. Okay. I put, because I mean, I started the list when I was already, you know, older, so there was a lot of names that were when I was very young and couldn't remember. Um, I put their names, the country where they're from, okay. and the country where I fucked them. Okay, Because right. I, I move around a lot. Right, exactly, right, so. right. Well, these guys added, uh, they add something else. They add points. Oh, no, I, I used to do that when I was younger. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> what what points did you, what, what, what points did you? Well, you know, like, it depended on one, what we did. Cause, oh, right. Cause, and the list right. was longer because right. I, right. I would add people I didn't have <laughs> intercourse with and just, like, messed around with. Right. But now it's just strictly But you still have the points. <laughs> no, I and what the is points. the average? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I no, I I don't have point systems. Anymore. But um, the average would be basically. I have a top five. And you would be a ten, Felipe. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, we're still waiting to find out. Yeah. I have a t I have a top five, and then and by nationality. <laughs> Ah, and yes. And right, okay, right. Not by, not by individuals, because right. that, that's my stuff. <laughs> so I do it by yeah, national. Right, right. And Argentinians are winning. Argentinians are winning. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, what is the top five? I got to know. Um, Argentinians, Uruguayans. Oh, it should wow. be the same thing. Right. No. Yeah, um, kind of the same. Let uh, um, me get hate for Venezuelans, that Venezuelans, Puerto Ricans, and Cubans. Cool. Wow. All, all, of all of them are from Latin America. All of them are Latin America. Oh, Latin America. oh wow. yeah, no, I, yeah. No European can make it up there. Um, very efficient German fuck. I actually have, just, <laughs> I, I. <laughs> no Asians, no, no right. blacks, right. not for any particular reasons. I right. just not in the list. Right. And for all my European friends, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all your, all of your European world. friends try harder. Just say exactly. All my you European gotta work a little harder. You gotta Anyone show. who's not you're on that list, do you're, her you're, better. You're 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 the six. <laughs> you're getting there. You're just keep trying. <laughs> we just didn't fuck enough. Exactly. Right. No yeah. Americans either. Um, there's there's some in the list, but not in the top. Not in the top five. No. <laughs> uh, what is the the difference? <laughs> what? Europeans and La Latin Americans. Well, the smell. <coughs> <coughs> no, it has a lot to do with hip movement. Yeah. Oh man. No, I'm serious. Um, it has to do a lot with movement, and there is something about Latin people that only includes the few of Argentinians I've fucked, to be honest. Because the rest are dead inside. <laughs> but there's something about Latin people that uh, makes you be very passionate, and that's really good during sex. Yeah. It doesn't matter the size of your <laughs> element or anything else, but how much energy you put into it, and how much you really want to be there, and the things you say, and the things you do, and how you let it flow or not. It's a cliche, but it's like dancing. Right. Yes, it's like dancing. Totally. Exactly. But that's a big part of the film also is that we talk about this idea of what it means as an American or as a European, the idea of Latin. You know? Exactly. That exotic image. Exactly. Have, I think yes. it's, I'm sorry, but I think it's hilarious that from the outside, uh -huh. we all consider Argentina Latin. Right. But then you move here. Right. <laughs> and you realize this is so European. <laughs> right. But yeah, and these guys so know absolutely ways. nothing about the countries that they go right. to. The guy came here and he said, so how many blocks are we from the beach? Because I want to go to the beach Honestly, right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that was cute. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. What, what, what are the burritos? <laughs> exactly. Right, right. <laughs> it's just, no tacos here. It's all Mexico. But yeah. Yeah. Un yeah. Exactly. Underneath Texas, it's all Mexico. Oh, man. So many beautiful. Americans think that. It's, exactly. It's I want to ask you a question though, before I forget. Uh -huh. 
do you find you were talking before that uh, about finding yourself in the middle of this production right. of making a film that goes against well you didn't say against your own beliefs you said right. uh, uh, making something that uh, I don't remember exactly what you it said wasn't still the point find is out. yeah the point is do you find yourself contradicting your own beliefs about prostitution what are what are you what is your stand on prostitution right i mean that's the great like uh, interest that i've had you know is that i want to push myself into into areas that i'm not comfortable with okay and that's the whole idea of this film is that to get us all into an area that we are not that comfortable with you know like pr prostitution is something that we all just imagine exists that it's there um I, you know i personally think it's awful i think it's a i mean It's very difficult to say, but it, the idea of submitting another person for your personal pleasure to and and to uh, exchange it with uh, money is for me it's a it's a fairly awful thing, and it's. Um, but what interests me more is that the the way that we can um, rationalize these things and how we can come to say that you know what no it's good and that. Because anyone who dedicates themselves, is it, there's always going to be a form of rationalization, but the majority of people won't say it. And so we need these guys who are now saying, I'm not ashamed of this, to say, what is your rationalization? Why, why do you say that this is good? And so they say it's good because I'm helping the women, they're getting money, you know? Uh, they're not being hypocrite, they're, bas they're right. basically entering into something that works because right. they are not hypocrites. Right, and it's <laughs> tough because I go, I go on, you know, we go to different festivals and around the country, and a lot of these judges, I get questions, you know, they're judges who are traveling around the world to exotic places for a week, and one of the judges may say, well, what's the matter if a girl wants to trade her beauty and her youth for a few dollars? And that's, you know, that's the question, is that... Uh, I think, like, for, I think prostitution is great. One... It's decided by the woman that that's what she wants to do, and she gets pleasure by giving pleasure. Right. And she's comfortable right. in this line of work. Because the truth that is... That is not prostitution. What is that? And that is... It's, it's a rare case. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, not, not necessarily. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's an organization here in Argentina that actually Mayo right. just tweeted on our tweet their, their website, right. and it's... It's a it's an organization that gets all these prostitutes together right. in order to get more rights and these are women that are willingly <coughs> working as prostitutes and they fairly enjoy their work and wow. it's, and the there's marriage. a lot a lot of prostitutes that do the problem is there's a lot of, of trafficking as well mm -hmm. human trafficking yes. right. that is terrible I used to live in Madrid where prostitution is legal mm -hmm. but the amount of human trafficking that that used to come from the west from the east of Europe right. was spectacular right. these, these girls were 14 years old posing as 18 years right, old right, right. because they fear for their lives and their family lives that if they wouldn't pay back their pimps what they owe right. them from bringing them to Spain they will kill their families back home right so the problem to me the problem with prostitution is human trafficking right not prostitution itself right like I don't think you you mentioned not that I want to go against what you said no, 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 but you mentioned um, that that you think it's awful I don't know if you said awful, but like you think it's kind I of think bad. I think I did. I think I, I, think I went <laughs> as far to say awful. You yeah. think it's awful that a woman would share her, um, just give out pleasure for money. Uh -huh. But we do that a lot. I mean, if you enjoy your career, you're giving out pleasure for money. It's not uh -huh. sexual pleasure. Right. No, Models do that as well. They're the giving problem out comes image. when the woman gets completely objectified. I think that is the problem. When she starts being a product who nobody cares about their opinion or their country where they live in for or me, the anything. Problem, it's that, I mean, I totally agree. But at the same time, the problem is that these women who say, I'm totally fine with this. I want to sell my body for money. I don't care. I mean, you all do the same too. It's fine. But the problem is they have been submitted to the same, um, they have been exposed to the same discourse these men have. And it's about you are better if you get more money. Uh, your beauty defines yourself and stuff like that. Right. So at some point, even if they say, I want to do this, I decide I want to save my, my body, they are um, somehow, uh, I, I don't know how to say They are supporting standards that they didn't create. Yeah. But we only apply that 
like, it seems like we apply that then to prostitution and nothing else. Like, if a woman says, I'm going to sacrifice my whole life to work at a corporation, mm-hmm. do the same yeah, thing. Like, if a woman right. says, I decide to be a prostitute and I don't feel hurt by this, You're right. maybe it's not that different if that woman is truly in a position to, like, freely elect to do that, which I think a lot of women in prostitution are not. And yeah, maybe at the end of the day, we're all whores of the system. Well, I mean, there's a part <laughs> of this is that you will, I mean, the idea is that you will find that there's not so much of a difference between the, the sadness of the prostitute and the sadness of the client. Is that in the end, you know, is that this guy is working, but he's basically a prostitute to these guys. And so that you'll find that there's this connection. And there's an important part. I mean, this is the part of the, of the film is that the, the idea of the film is to generate discussion. And so I, I think it's great that we have a different idea about prostitution because this is like a debate that nobody has. And that was the idea of the film. And that is particular actually why we don't bring up human trafficking. Human trafficking is like conspicuously absent in the film for a very reason is that the idea is to show the best of all possible worlds. Okay. That these are women who are there by choice, they're getting paid in dollars, the men treat them well because, you know, I mean, and, and generally they treat them well because they're, you know, coming from the, they, they're new to the country, they aren't gonna do something illegal or things like that. And so to show, in the best of all these cases, what is the situation like? And But, you know, there is always the fan, the, the ghost of, of human trafficking, be- in which is very interesting. The client goes, you know, I hope I've never been with a woman who's there, not by her force. Mm-hmm. I never ask those questions. I, n- I never go that far to actually, you know, want to find that out. I just hope that that's not the case. But of course, I'm not going to ask those questions because that puts them. But they're in very a- aware of it, then. Of course, but in the, but you're right, and so they are nervous. You know, they don't want to be part of that. But, but do they believe it, or is that just like a convenient? Like, I hope right. that's not true. Well, one like, of the the great quotes one of the guys says to me is that like. You know, that with these girls, they live depressing lives, mostly illiterate, they've been raped, you know, and it's terrible. That's why I don't ask them questions, because it, it bums me out, <laughs> and I'm not here to get bummed out, you know. But he knows about how terrible it is, and he thinks that he's solving the problem by giving them money. And that, you know, he's helping them out of their situation by giving them money. And there's also the question is that these women are doing this by uh, election, by choice. But one of the, many of the girls that we talked to, she comes. one of the girls I could talk to, she comes from La Plata, all the way from La Plata to hang out at these bars and wait for a guy. And she says, you know, I'll wait in all day, all night, and I'll be lu- sometimes I'll be lucky if I get one client. Yeah. And so you can imagine, she came here from La Plata. If that one client is an overweight 80-year-old man, she wants to get the money to make, make it up for coming from La Plata for one night. And so she'll take it. So her idea her the choice the idea of choice gets complicated in all these things and all of this is under the uh, the the idea that this is the best of all cut possible cases mm-hmm. from here it only gets worse wow and so that is the idea of the film wow yeah, that's that's that great uh, so we gotta wrap up now we're in a yeah. time. Uh, do you have anything to add or anywhere someone can go to find uh, out more about do you we about have your anything film? we can uh, um, not really i mean the film isn't <laughs> finished so we don't have a website or anything. Okay, we posted yeah, the, right. the poster. It's very nice. We right, thank that. you. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Uh, the producer is Copia Cero uh, and yeah. Natalia Cortesi. She also does Copia work. Copiacero.com.ar. Exactly. So she's producing the film. Uh, we're going to be in Mar del Plata. The festival is really soon. Exactly. In the, the 30th in of this month. Yes, exactly. Wow. So um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be there for that. I'm also there I'm projecting Super 8 films where I do experimental films. So we're going to be there for that. And we're hoping the, the best of all ca- possible situations that we are there for Bafisi though that it will get him oh, uh, that would be great. release in Bafisi that's what we're hoping for that's amazing cool. we're really looking forward for you to finish this so we can watch it great and have our listeners look it up great great well uh, thanks a lot guys I guess that's our show for this week thank we're you so much for listening to show number 11 with Jeff Sorrilla and Natalia we're gonna finish with Gabe Sumrite Yes, but first, remember that you can find us 